Would you like to take your logo and have it appear on your video project? Or applying a video to your text to create any effect you want, eventually making something as corny as this. Grips here and thanks for joining me as you do. To start, we're not going to actually use the video editing software. Whether you're using Corel, Avid, Adobe, it doesn't matter. We are going to use the standalone version of the new blue Titler Pro. And I will show you how you can do that. All right, so go to your PC, open up any folder, this PC documents, scroll down until you see the new blue. Double click on the new blue, you'll see Titler Pro, double click on Titler Pro. And now you'll see here the launch button. Now what you can do is you can create the shortcut. If you don't know how to do that, right click and you'll see here create shortcut now i've already done that now once you have created that you can just simply drag that onto your desktop now i've done that as well if i release it it tells me no i don't want that because i already have it so i'm just going to replace this one and now i'm going to launch the actual software so here we are now in the standalone version it looks exactly the same as if you were to launch it from your video editor what we need to do is we need to go to file and then we're going to import a vector file so therefore, before we do anything, we must first create a vector file. In order to create a vector file, you'll need something like Adobe Illustrator. Now, if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, you can always use the free version called Inkscape, and I will leave the link in the description. Both will do the exact same thing. You create your text. Now, once you have finished creating your text, you need to save this in an EPS file. So file, save, and now you're going to get the option here, Adobe Illustrator. No, you click down here and you're going to be looking for the thing called EPS. The Inkscape will do the exact same thing and then you save it wherever it is that you want to save it. Now I've done that already, so let's go back into Titler Pro. One of the first things we need to do is remove the entry text because we're not going to be using that. So simply click it until this turns blue and then just press delete on your keyboard. So there you go. And then all we need to do now is look for that file we just created and import it into the software. File, import, and go to the vector because an EPS file is actually a vector. So open that up and then look for the file where you saved it. I've got it here. Double click and bingo. There it is. It is that simple. You're probably wondering why we can't just type in the word grips inside the editor itself. And I'll show you the difference. I'm going to basically make this a little bit smaller and put it off to one side and I'm going to add the text and let's say I'm going to do the exact same thing I'm going to type in the word grips and I'm going to show you the exact reason why you want to do what I what you want to do here's a difference here it's one word and I can't do anything I can't just m manipulate the letter G or R where I can do it with this now what's the difference double click I can now individually make each letter do whatever it is that I want it to do. And that is a huge difference because I can also apply different effects on each letter. Where if you do it into, say, the text editor itself within the software, you don't have as much control. So if you did have something that's very unique, you want to create that in the vector, especially if it's a logo. That's no words, it's just a symbol. Then you cannot obviously create that in the software editor. Okay, so I just made a quick video edit to bring us back to the beginning otherwise uh, it's going to get confusing all right so let's have some fun and let's create something really cool so in the beginning of the intro i had kind of a check plate look to it so that's what i want to apply as well so i'm going to go open up my library by just hitting this little icon here and i'm going to go into the style section you can just do the drop down window styles and i'm going to go into the cinematic folder i'm going to look for the check it plate make sure you are highlighted and then just scroll around until you see something that you like like I said, I did the diamond effect with the checker plate, and voila, there it is. To apply it, all I need to do is click, hold, and drag it, and release it onto the blue line here. And there it is. Beautiful. Now, I can go back out of the style sections because I don't need it, and I just simply just close this window and right back into the attributes window. Now, this one has added extrusion already. I'll show you that. You can see it. Beautiful. And if you didn't have it and you did want it, well, then simply just add the extrusion here. Now, I'm quite happy with what I have. So I'm just going to leave exactly the way I want it. Now, the only thing I may do here is just reposition it into the corner. I don't need this to be exact. Reposition this in the corner. Bam. 
and then scale it down slightly because it is quite large and I just want it to pop up in this corner here itself. Now in the intro I also have one of the letters slightly changed so I'm going to do the same thing here. I may grab the letter G, double click. Now I'm only highlighting the letter G and I'm going to increase that and maybe put a slight rotation on it just so it can stand out and look slightly different. There you go. Now I wish to add a shadow effect like a drop down shadow and in order to do that I first must remove this black background otherwise you can't see it. So let's do that. Let's go into the view background and I'm going to go for the alpha checkered board and that's going to also be important for later on. All right, I'm just going to put a slight rotation on this as well. So, oh, sorry about this. I'm very unprofessional here, aren't I? Here we go. We're, we're learning, but we're learning. Here we go. Even I don't know how to use this software. <laughs> now, I'm just doing this on purpose so you can really see the, when I start adding the shadow onto it. Okay, that's looking good. Let's highlight that again. And what we're going to need to do is going to go into the style layer and click it down and you want to go for the 2d face because you want to create the shadow from the 2d only and you hit the shadow and then all of a sudden you have a new option here called the shadow tab and then from here you can start creating whatever you want so uh, let's say you want that shadow to come right out like this or you want it slightly raised like this you want it don't want it to be so strong so you can blur it a bit you know, you can really have a good play with this on exactly how the effects look. So I'm a little bit stronger. And I'm just going to blur it out because after all, I don't want it to be so strong. And there we have it. So now we've now, now we have now. Good Lord, I should learn English. Now we can, oh my Lord, let's start that again. <laughs> now we created the shadow effect. Now let's see if we can add some little bit of magic to it, like a lighting effect. So let's go into the scene tab, light and camera, and you'll see here you have more options. And we're just gonna play with the first light, which is up here. And what I wanna do is as the timeline moves, I wanna create more of a, like a light effect across it. So let's do that. I'm gonna turn on the keyframing here. And I'm going to change the directional to a point, like so. And basically what I want to do, as it's traveling along the time run, the light is traveling as well. So let's go and do that. Let's make it go here, or let's make it go darker as it moves along. And then we can make it go back to lighter as it gets to here. All I did was add in the keyframe, and any time I make any adjustments, you can see here it adds the keyframe in automatically. And let's have a quick preview of that. So I'll just drag the scrub it and then watch it. Yes, look at that. That's looking pretty neat. And it just gives you a little cool effect. And if you want it to be more smooth, you can hit this little icon here, smooth interpolation. And then it's going to be just like flowing water. Look at that. Look what we created. Now, in case you're wondering what is up here, this is really used for transitions. And if, you, if it annoys you and it, or it confuses you, just hit this little icon and it makes it disappear. Here's another thing you want to think about. At what length do you want this to play on your video? Three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. Let's say you want the whole thing to be roughly 10 seconds. Well, then you need to change this title here. So all I'm going to do is just highlight the O and the three and change it to a one and a zero. And then watch what happens. If I hit enter, the whole timeline increases to the 10 seconds because when we have finished everything, I'm going to render it and then save it as a file. Let's go back to objects highlight this so we're back into the attributes tab no I don't need the letter G now you have two options here you can leave it as is render it and then save it as a video file and then bring that video file into your video editing software or if you wanted to you can create animations within this software and then render it all out at the same time so let's just do that so you have an understanding how that works so in the beginning I don't really want it here so I'm going to use the global tab and I'm going to change where it is. I'm going to bring it off screen. And then I'm going to hit the turn on keyframes. So as it plays along the timeline, obviously what I want it to do is appear. So I may make it come up in within, say, three second mark. And now I want this to come up somewhere. Oh my God, I'm making it huge. I don't want that. <laughs> I want to change the positioning. There we go. And now what it did, like anything, because I did the control or change the command it automatically added in the keyframe and you know what what could be cool is actually scale it up as it gets onto your screen you can actually click and drag this too you don't need to use these global commands 
click and drag and sometimes is a lot faster and let's have a quick preview of that because i think that's going to come up looking pretty awesome all right there you go now in case you're wondering why that didn't look smooth that's because i had it set on the high setting so edit preferences preview quality and i have it set at best now my computer is as old as the 10 commandments so it's not going to run that smooth plus i didn't even render this out so i'm just going to get a real rough copy of how it will look like now once i do render this out and save it as a file it's going to come up looking really smooth let's wrap this up and then later i will show you how we can add the video file to your text so let's go to file export and mov file so movie file and then just save it to wherever you want and as you can see i already created a few for you because i you know after all i am a professional <laughs> not really and then let's save that and it'll just go into rendering now this is going to take a little while a little while a little while so through the magic of editing i'm going to speed that up so now i'm within my video editing now it doesn't matter if you've got avid premiere pro it really doesn't matter it all works the same i'm using corel video studio i'm going to drag it into my folder so i open this up and i'm going to go for the where i basically saved it and i believe it was in the customs logo and I'm going to be looking for that MOV file that I called Grips. And here it is. And voila. Now, if I just drag this onto the timeline and play it, you'll see how awesome it is. There you go. Beautiful. Now, here's the thing. When we were working within the software itself here, I told you to change this to an alpha channel. And the reason is, if I didn't do that and render it, I'm going to render the background as well. And what difference does that make, you ask? Well, let me, uh, let me show you. Let's take this down. And I'm, let's create one of the sample videos because now it turns into an overlay. So let's uh, have a preview of that. Ta da! So as you can see, now if I didn't do that, I would then have the black border and then you can't see anything. Could all of this have been done directly within the video editing software? Absolutely. You can place your project on the timeline, add the filter to it, and then manipulate it by adding in the vector file. Just my personal experience that working with two software at once, it's laggy and choppy. By doing it the standalone saving and then bringing it out, it just saves so much time and it's a lot easier for me to do. And it's just my personal way of doing it. I will quickly show you how I added the fire effect to my logo or my text. First off, I'm just going to increase this little text track here. Double click, double click again. And then I'm just simply going to write the word grips. And I'm also going to put a bold on there so it can really pop out. I'm going to do a slight rotation on here so I can really sell the illusion or show you it even better. Put a little bit of an extrusion on here like, yep, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. I'm happy with that. All right. In order to do this, it's very simple. Image video. Click it here in the white square. Double click. And that launches where your folder is. Double click on the folder that you want or the file that you want. And there it is. It is that simple and that quick. It's ridiculous. Now... In my little intro, I had my a little photo of myself in the corner here, so we can do that. File, import, image, and then quickly look for that. There I am, and then I can just fit it to size, and, and you can, if you want it, you can fade in, fade out, use the global effects and all that, and uh, basically then you get this cheesy look. <laughs> Obviously, I need to do my photo editing better, and like before, we need to go into the view, background, and then go into the alpha channel and then just like before again we just export it into a movie file and there you go my friends it is really that simple now recently i conducted a small poll on my youtube channel asking how often do you use the filters and 53 percent said well i'm not really sure how they work so i am here hopefully going to create a few series on how each filter works and as always thanks for watching